Hey everyone, it's Tech Dad here. Today we are covering how to use Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides professionally on your iPad Pro. So it's 2024 and the iPad has actually changed significantly in the past two years. It's changed so much that I have been able to replace my Mac completely and just use my iPad Pro. For all my work, it's my only device. So I'm a project manager by day and I use my iPad Pro every day at work. And I use the Google Suite extensively with my team members. So today I wanna show you the best tips and tricks for using the Google Suite in your professional life. The Google Suite can run pretty darn well on the iPad, but there are some nuances and things you should know before you just jump into it. So before I was a project manager, I used to run a tech support center at a university, and I helped lots of folks use this suite on their iPad. So in this video, I really want to cover several tips on how to use the iPad Pro effectively when you're dealing with the Google Suite. I want to cover things such as file management. That's one of the big pain points on the iPad is folks don't know how to manage files, and so you really want to know the nuances of how to use use Google Drive and manage your files in Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides. I also want to talk about the difference between the Google Apps versus using the Google Suite in the browser. And so there's big differences and big changes that you need to know about and what works best for your workflow. And so we'll really take a dive into how the Google Suite works on the browser on the iPad versus the apps that are available in the App Store. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is file management with Google Drive and the Google Suite in general. And so you can see down here on my doc, I've got the four Google apps. I've got Google Drive, Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides. And so it's critical that you go to the App Store and download Google Drive. It's going to help you get started in file management. Okay, so something I want to point out is when you open the Google Drive app, you can view your files and you can drag and drop. So if I want to take this test document and drop it into this folder here, it does do that. But one thing people like to have about file management is they want to be able to drag and drop across windows. And Google Drive in itself does not do this well. So if I try to pull the app out to open another instance, it won't let me do it. And so what I recommend is you download Google Drive the app, but then you don't really use it. What I would recommend is using the Files app. And so I'm going to open that now. Okay, so in the Files app, once you download Google Drive, you'll see it appear here on the left-hand menu of the Files app. And so now you can access your files and you can open multiple instances of that and you can drag and drop across Windows. So let me see if I can just grab this test sheet and drop it in the archive folder. Yep, works just fine. So this is really the way I prefer to manage my files when it comes to Google Drive. Now I will say that Google Drive was designed to be used in the browser. And so if I pull up Safari here, you can see that I've opened two windows and you can open up to four windows of Safari at once. And so so this is a great way also to manage your files in Google Drive, but once again, you cannot drag files across browser windows. So if I try to drag this over here, it's not happening. So if you are gonna manage files in Google Docs on the browser, you can do it, but you're gonna be stuck with using the little three dots and the organize and moving things around through your drive in this way. So again, my preferred way of managing files in Google Drive is to use the Files app and you can drag and drop, create new folders, and all the things you would be able to expect to do on a Mac or a PC. Okay, so now let's discuss using the apps versus using the browser. So it's very clear that Google really designed their suite to be used in a web browser, and they designed their suite well before the iPad was popular for using it professionally. So if you open Google Docs inside the web browser, you'll notice that it's really zoomed in. I don't know why it does this, so I can't see the whole screen, and there's no way to use keyboard shortcuts to zoom it out. So the best way I find to fix this is to make sure you have Stage Manager on, and if you don't know how to do that, it's this button right here. But make sure Stage Manager is on, and then you can just grab the window and resize it, and then you can see the whole screen. So I don't know why Google does that. It doesn't load correctly in Safari, and it doesn't load very well in any other browser either on the iPad. Now, one thing to point out is if you have the apps installed like I do down here, as soon as you click a document or a sheet, it's going to pull up the app. And so here I have the document. This is okay to work in, but if we want to work in the browser, you, you cannot have the apps installed. So I went ahead and I removed Docs, and so let's just take a look at what this looks like in the browser. Now once the document loads in the browser, it looks very much like what you'd see on a computer. And it pretty much works for the most part like you would have on a computer. You've got the same functionality, you have the help tab, which I really like, because if you can't find something in this menu, it's great to just be able to find it in the help menu. And it works just like it would on a computer. So the browser really is my preferred way to access Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides. It just works well. So let's talk again about having multiple instances of the app 
pops open. And so if I try to open Google Slides and I wanna make a presentation and I'll click new presentation. Okay, so now I've got my slides open and I can start working. But what if I wanted another presentation open? Well, when you try to pull the app up, it can't do that. So you can only have one instance of the app open on the iPad, which is really limited. If you do this with Microsoft, Microsoft can have up to four windows open at a time on the screen. So this is a bit of a limitation. So if you wanna have multiple documents or sheets open at a time, I really recommend using the browser. And so here I've got a document open and I can have this here, put it to the side and just open up another instance of Safari. So now we can have multiple documents open, we can copy and paste from one to the next so I can grab the text here let's just highlight it and we'll copy and then we can paste over here so it's nice to have multiple documents or sheets open but if you want to do that you want to use the browser version for sure okay so let's talk about some of the limitations that the Google Apps have and so I'm just gonna open up sheets and so I've got a little test spreadsheet here and let's say I wanted to create a pivot table well I'm not seeing it in the menu and so if I go up to the three dots and I go to help and let's just see if I can find how to do a pivot table. So create pivot tables. When you go to this, it says to use pivot tables, go to sheets.google.com on a computer. So it's telling you right there, eh, sorry, you can't do a pivot table in Google Sheets, the app. And so you're gonna find a lot of functionality is missing in the Google apps themselves, which is why I always recommend to use the browser over the apps if possible. And even though it's said to do that on a computer, you can do pivot tables and all the other functionality inside the browser. So if I open up my test spreadsheet and we search for pivot table here, we can insert the pivot table. And so the computer-like functionality is available in the browser version for Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides on your iPad, which is why I recommend you really stay away from the apps if possible. Okay, so for my third point, I wanna talk about using a secondary display with the iPad when you're working on Google Docs, Sheets, or Slides. So like I said, the Google Suite was made for a computer and it looks best on a larger screen where you've got lots of real estate to work with, especially if you wanna have multiple windows open at a time. And you can do this with your iPad iPad Pro. I actually bought the Apple Studio display. Absolutely love it. 27 inches, 5K display. It's great for work. So if you're going to use your iPad Pro for work, I highly recommend you use a second display. Apps are actually more limited when you use a secondary display. And so Google designed the iPad apps to be touch friendly. And they haven't put a lot of work into them in the last several years, I don't think. So they're still primarily designed to be used with touch. A lot of the keyboard shortcuts don't work, for example, within the apps, but they work just fine in the browser version. So like for example, if you hold shift and grab a bunch of cells in the browser version works just fine. But if you try that in the app version of Sheets, it's a no-go. And since the apps are made to be touch friendly, it's really hard to grab the little dots and actually drag. If you find yourself working in the apps on the iPad screen, I actually like to use the Apple Pencil for more precision, especially when I'm trying to grab a bunch of text or grab a bunch of cells. But again, if you have a secondary display hooked up and you've got your keyboard and trackpad, it's just a lot more user friendly. Feels like a computer. Okay, so there's my rundown on Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides on the iPad Pro. Like I said, there are some nuances to learn. You want to make sure you use it in the browser if at all possible. If you use the apps, they're okay. They're just way more limited. I hope this gets you started in using the Google Suite on your iPad. It's really fun. Great to use at work. Give it a try. That's all I got for you. If you like this sort of content, please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.